Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Do you how do, fellow scholars? Um, yeah, obviously I've run out of ideas for videos, so we're pulling from the Rainy Days, Rainy Day Fund for a little show and tell where I show you all of the film that I have in my freezers and you tell me how much of an asshole I am for hoarding it and that I'll never be able to shoot anything good with it anyway. As you can see, I have two ice cream freezers bursting at the seams full of film stock. How might something like this have happened? What's the best way to describe this? An allegory. And here to help you picture it is the channel's very own overworked and ununionized VFX department. It's a warm spring day and you're starving, absolutely famished. So you decide to go to a fancy restaurant like Olive Garden. You sit down and order pasta, but you tell the waiter to keep the pasta flowing because you are very, very hungry and you're more than happy to pay for the pasta even if Olive Garden inflates the pasta prices once a year for no reason. So you're sitting there eating pasta as fast as it's coming out to you because you're a little pasta pervert, but uh oh, now the waiter brings out your free unlimited breadsticks and it'd be kind of rude to turn down something that somebody was offering you for free, right? So you start eating breadsticks and pasta and before you know it, you're up to your earballs in carbs because the outflow isn't as rapid as the increased and unexpected inflow. Now you could be a responsible adult and tell the waiter you'd like to slow down on the incoming pasta or breadsticks, but you're a piece of shit who really loves pasta, so you just keep going until you have a fridge full of leftover Olive Garden. Smash cut back now to my own freezer, and now maybe, hopefully, you understand why it is the way that it is, because I don't think I can make it any more clear. So why don't we take a look inside and see what we got. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. There's also a lot of ice, so we're gonna kinda de-barnacle these freezers a little bit. That's what this is for. I didn't just pull that out of my ass, by the way. It was sitting behind my ass. But let's do it quick because I had to close the office doors and there's no airflow in here. So it's gonna heat up pretty quick, probably. You know, I don't know if you can see this on camera. There's a Cracker Barrel sticker on the outside. I went to Cracker Barrel for the first time, but it was a, uh, it was okay. I don't really get the hype, me personally. Do you even have to ask for the senior discount when you go to Cracker Barrel or do they just work it into the bill. As you can probably see, I have a very good organizational uh, system going in here. The top here was originally supposed to just be 120 film. It's kind of evolved <laughs> as, it's kind of evolved as uh, my needs have grown. Yeah, oh, this is like frozen on here. I thought this would be easier to get off. All right, so we'll start with 120 film or I guess really just, we'll call it the top shelf. That actually makes it sound kind of fancy. Most of it's not. Cat Labs 320. I haven't shot any of it. Fuji Pro 400H, I have quite a few packs of it. Definitely was one of those people that got very scared that it was gonna be leaving us forever and uh, bought a bunch of it. As you can see, I have five packs here. I don't know what I'm gonna shoot this stuff with yet. Stuff all expires in 2023. Vision 3 250D for uh, 120 actually. So it's re-spooled from IMAX film. It's an ECN2 process film. I have shot one roll of this in the Hasselblad and uh, it turned out really good. It's for a video. Video is not done yet. I shot it last year. So I don't know if the video is ever gonna get done. Kodak Gold for 120. I bought a bunch of this stuff because I was shooting a lot of gold at the time. And I still shoot a lot of gold. I was thinking, oh, well, they're just porting it over to 120. I love the look of gold. Seems like a, a reasonable purchase, right? Well, in my opinion, I don't think gold 200 is the same as the 35 millimeter version. It seems like it's somewhere in between Porti 400 and Kodak Gold. Okay, speaking of Portra 400, I've got some. I think everybody's got some, probably. This is so cliche nowadays. Does anybody even shoot this anymore? I can't even remember the last time I shot Portra 400. I kind of wonder if I'm gonna do a full-blown like character arc and come back around to Portra 400. Eh, probably not. It's getting really hot in here. And we're only like barely through this. Cinestill 400 Daddy. This stuff is good. I've got a couple of rolls. I have not shot it in 120 yet. I shot it before it was officially released in sort of a review video. You kind of have to develop a workflow for this stuff. If you just raw dog it, it looks fine, but I think there's good ways to shoot 400D and make it look really great. It's not a bad film stock. It's just not the, uh, it's not the goat or the go-to for me. Speaking of goats, Cinestill 800T. I have a lot of it. This stuff is absolutely amazing. You would think, ow, that hit me in the dick. For a while, I thought this stuff's really only for like night photography. But if you shoot this during the day at 400 ISO, I think it looks really cool. You definitely have to pick and choose where you use it. In certain conditions, it does definitely look very, very cool. And I mean cool as in like tight, but also cool as in like colder. 
What do we got here? It's a Provia 100F. I went through a very brief Provia 100F phase, and you know what? I actually took some shots that I really like. It's not a bad slide film. I'm just not really a slide film guy, you know? Some people are slide film people, and others are more fun at parties. Oh, this is some interesting stuff. Well, I'll take it out of the bag for you. This is 35 millimeter, but it's Fuji Super Presto 1600. So it's a 1600 ISO film stock. It was discontinued. I want to do a video on this. This was sent to me by Xpan Japan. He's a very, very talented Xpan panoramic photographer. Cinestill BWXX. This stuff is actually really cool. I've been doing more research on this stuff. It doesn't have anti-halation layer. It's kind of a black and white film that'll give you halations. Of course, they're black and white halations. It's not like you're going to shoot a black and white film and get red halations. Actually, that'd be kind of tight though. I've shot this a handful of times. The last time I shot it was in the Makina. I thought the photos turned out Absolutely amazing. So here's some uh, Vericolor 3. This expired in the year 2000. Yeah, I've never shot Vericolor. At least I don't think I have. No, I have. I can't remember anything anymore. Of course, we got some Lomo Purple. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this stuff. Ectochrome E100. I forgot I had this stuff. I bought this a long time ago, right when the channel started, because I wanted to do a review. BS stands for uh, Very Sexy. No, it stands for Vivid Saturation. I haven't shot any of it yet. It's still unopened. When did it expire? 2002. All right, so that's sort of the end of the tour of the all my uh, cool-ass 120 film. Careful, careful. Oh, okay. Damn it. Damn it. Let's move on down to the next rack, which is primarily 35 millimeter film. I honestly don't even know what I have in here and it's gonna be difficult getting it out. <sighs> Let's just bite the bullet. All right, what do we got? Cinestill 800T, Derev Pan. Der Am I saying that right? It's 400 ISO. Oh, wow. That film is very, very thin, like my hairline. What's in here? Oh, this is a uh, Aerochrome. This was given to me by somebody. You know who you are. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, probably shouldn't be taking it out of its case now that I'm thinking about it. This is good stuff. It's called FPP Infrachrome Color Infrared Film. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Aerochrome basically. Aerochrome, if you don't know, is a very very cool film stock. It's probably one of my favorite film stocks. But it is a very very rare film stock nowadays. It's very expensive. I keep saying very a lot. I've seen some rolls of uh, the 120 version of this go for like 300 bucks. 35 millimeter rolls go for 150. And at the end of the day, you're buying expired film. But if you are interested in getting this film remanufactured by Kodak, I have launched a campaign to chug flaming hot Mountain Dew in hopes of getting the production line back online. Most of you guys don't realize I chug these at a uh, room temperature. It's meant to be enjoyed cold. Is this even meant to be enjoyed? Wonder what it tastes like if I mix it with coffee. Is this a bad idea? Oh yeah. Actually, that is surprisingly absolutely terrible. Ugh. Well, now that I'm surely gonna die, let's just keep going. It's getting really hot in here. Let me see if I can open the doors. Ugh. Ugh, yeah, it's locked from the outside. Damn it. Um, okay, let me... Uh, text Monica, see when she's gonna be home. Oh, I'm at 1% battery. Well, uh, I guess there's nothing really left to do. Here's some more uh, Aerochrome. Here's the original box. Wait, because there is some Ectochrome, but it's, oh, ball sack. Yeah, this Aerochrome is process AR5. I have never heard of that process. Oh, here's an interesting one. Adox Color Mission. I don't know the exact details on this, but I think Color Mission is like a new color negative film stock, right? Here's some cool uh, film stock, actually. It's Rolly Vario Chrome. This stuff is uh, basically what started my obsession with FPP Retrochrome. We'll get into that in a little bit. I don't actually know what it is, but most likely it's very expired Ectochrome that was used for like government stuff. You know, top secret, Area 51 kind of stuff back in the day. So this was sent to me by a viewer in, uh, I think it was Japan or Korea, um, South Korea to be specific. I think it's like a drugstore film. It basically looks like minion film. <laughs> Oh, this is a interesting film stock, Double Film Apollo. So it's a 200 speed color negative film, I believe. But uh, a lot of people sent me this. They said that the results looked a lot like Retrochrome. Created using Revolog technology. I don't know what the f that means. <sighs> uh, uh, I wish that window opened. Silver Souls. This is a cine film. So it's ECN2 process film. It's specialty film. Uh, if I can get this thing open. I'm weak. There we go. Uh, we got 200T. Oh, is this the one that's... Yeah, it's all 200T. Ooh, here's an interesting one. Ektar 1000. When was the last time you heard about that? Probably been a while. Oh, somebody got this on clearance. When does it expire? 93. Whoever bought it, bought it for $3.63. 
Uh, Kodak Color Film. Oh, Elite Chrome 200. This was sent to me by Sergio. Sergio. Um, I shot some 400 while I was in New York. The 400 looked really good. It was definitely a perfect setting for like an overcast day in New York. <sighs> What the hell is this? Uh, oh, red scale. Red, I've been shooting so much red scale lately. It is the coolest film stock, you guys. Really only good in like certain conditions, but uh, when you know, you know. Fuji Natura 1600. You cannot really get this stuff very easily anymore, which sucks. It's a 1600 uh, ISO color negative film. One is expired in 2019 and the other is expired in 2018. I have wanted to do a Natura 1600 video for so very long. But what condition do you shoot this film stock in? There's so many variables. You can't shoot it in the middle of the day. 1600 is enough sensitivity to theoretically shoot it at night, but this film is expired and it's a high ISO film. So high ISO expired film loses sensitivity a lot faster. Uh, this is just called Kodak High Speed Infrared Film. It is another black and white infrared film. This is the stuff I think that it doesn't have like an anti-halation layer. So when you shoot infrared with it, it looks very glowy because you get a lot of bounce back, a lot of halation. Develop before March 1979. Uh, this film is probably f this is a very interesting one, if I can get it open. It's Silver Sols, again. Uh, they sent me some special film. So it's old Fuji Cine film here. This one is 125T. <laughs> uh, Lomo Purple with a bunch of ice on it. Oh, Tri-X, ugh. All right, let's see if this fits back in here. Careful, careful. This drawer is where I keep all of my large format. Oh, man, it's getting really hot in here. Getting kind of lightheaded from all the heat. Maybe call for help. Ugh, whoa, whoa. This is the box of the expired Ektachrome 8x10 film. I am slowly working my way through it. I don't know if I love the look normally, I guess you could say. It's pretty expired, so it gives you kind of like a faded, kind of purpley look. Most of the time, it's not really for me. When did this expire? Oh, I covered up the expiry date with tape because I didn't want to be exposed to the harsh truth that it's probably very expired. I actually red scaled some of this stuff recently and it looks amazing, it looks way better. So I think this is all gonna be red scale film from now on. Okay, so here is some uh, Fuji NPS 160. This is not a film stock you can get anymore. I mean, that's can be said for pretty much anything Fuji. I don't know when I'm gonna shoot this stuff again, but it's cool to have a Fuji color negative eight by 10. This is Aerochrome, wonderful, wonderful four by five Aerochrome. And uh, there's 10 sheets in here. Um, Caleb parsed them out, so there better be 10 sheets in here. Ilford HP5, the goat. Uh, of course I have this in four by five. Yeah, you guys already know HP5, I like whatever. Do I even really need to talk about it? This is an interesting one. This was sent to me by uh, Graham, I think. Makofot IR820C Aura black and white sheet film. So this is a near infrared sensitive film stock and it says without anti-halation layers. Um, as you can see before you, I also have like a couple bags full of just lots and lots of film here. So let's just start here. Kodak Gold. I went on a total rampage and bought like, geez, I think like 30 rolls of Kodak Gold. You know, showing these giant bags full of film, it kind of probably makes me look like I'm some doomsday prepper, scared of the day when film isn't around anymore and I just buy like 100 rolls of something. These were sent to me by Ken. Thank you, Ken. And that's it for uh, fridge number one. Let's move on to fridge number two, which is a little bit smaller. Okay, let's dive in. Whatever. Where do I even start with all this? F it. Mm. 4800. This stuff is really cool. I really like it, but it is also very expensive. I have been shooting a lot of this stuff lately. I recently shot it and pushed it to stop, and I thought the results looked really, really good. Yeah, I like Portrait 800. It is one of the greatest film stocks ever around, and I swear to God, Kodak, if you discontinue it, I'll have to chug something far worse than Flaming Hot Mountain Dew to get it back. What the f is this? Oh, Fuji Color Super HQ 100. Interesting. Super high quality 100? So I guess it's just a Fuji film, but it's like a, uh, high quality Fuji film. I don't know if that's a thing. This is the Euphoric, Euphoric 100. So you guys know that Nickelodeon show Euphoria? They shot 35 millimeter Ektachrome, but they cross processed it for season two, I believe. But they had a bunch of stock left over and I guess Atlanta Film Co got a hold of it. Uh, you can send it in, have it cross processed and supposedly it's kind of the same look as the show. This is some more Ektachrome. This was from the last Ektachrome Christmas. Kodak Underwater. I have never seen this stuff before and I have never seen it again. I will shoot this, but I do want to shoot it underwater. I'm just not underwater 
water often enough. Uh, yeah, definitely have a bunch of this stuff. So this is a bunch of uh, old pharmacy, I think it's Fuji C200. Uh, it's just Fuji 200. This guy has a YouTube channel. He found a bunch of this stuff. Very, very kind and sent me a bunch of it. It looks like it was expired all in 2007. All right, next shelf. This is the basically expired film shelf. Let's check out what's in the big bag of expired film. Konica infrared 750 nanometers. So this is an infrared film, but I think it's actually, oh no, it's black and white. I got excited thinking it was maybe color, but it's not. Uh, this is Konica SRG 3200. Holy shit, this is a, this is a 3200 speed color film, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's probably not 3200 anymore. Uh, this is a really cool box. Agfa Color Maxi 100. I guess it's a color film, 27 exposures. Is that a thing back in the day, 27? I feel like it's usually either 24 or 36, isn't it? Oh, this is interesting. PMZ 120 Pro 1000. This expired in the year 2000. So this is a 1000 speed film. I think this is color too. This might be the stuff somebody sent me and I think they found it in an old hospital. Agfa Optima 400. Oh, this is a cool box. Why do they write new on this? At some point, something is not new. I don't know, maybe I'm just cranky and old. 400 ISO, it looks like a color film. Agfa, well, Agfa color, yeah, so it's color. <laughs> so stupid. One more shelf, one more shelf, one more. But before we jump into what's on the bottom shelf here, if you're super into film freezers and what's inside them, wait until you hear about the next coolest thing websites through today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're in need of a professionally designed website at a moment's notice, then I have some good news for you. You can stop searching and simply rejoice. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that allows you to create a fully customizable website with ease. That's because the modules used by Squarespace are incredibly straightforward and intuitive to use. I've been using Squarespace to host my own photography website and portfolio for the past couple of years, and I could not be happier about how easy it is to rearrange my work or simply add new work into the mix. Plus, if designing a website isn't your thing, there are hundreds of pre-designed templates crafted by professionals for you to pick from. And if you hit a snag, Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer service is there to lend a helping hand. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Oh, it is really hot in here. Did I lose track of time at some point or fall asleep? Uh, should I just pull this thing out? That sounds oddly sexual. <sighs> yeah. I'm kind of ashamed to show this, to be honest. I have a lot of FPP Retrochrome, probably more than one man needs. What can I say? FPP Retrochrome, one of my favorite film stocks. It just looks so good. It's basically the same thing as Rolly Variochrome, just uh, under a different label. A lot of the tops of these uh, Retrochrome things just pop off constantly. <clears throat> Uh, what do we have here besides Retrochrome? Even more Retrochrome. This is the 160 Retrochrome. Uh, Retrochrome 160, Retrochrome 160, 160, 320, 320, 320, 160, 320. Ooh, what's this? <sighs> Something interesting has appeared. This is Kodak Gold 100. Yeah, I guess they used to make a Kodak Gold 100. Nowadays it's in 200 speed. Uh, Retrochrome 320, 320, and then a bunch of Retrochrome. Yay, I guess that's it. Yeah, have something to say about my film freezer? I guess leave a comment. If you've watched all the way to this point, leave a comment that says, wow, this channel used to be good. And uh, I'll know that you were here in these final moments of the video. See you on the next one, which will hopefully be a lot better. Aw, oh, man. I had a weird dream last night that someone was telling me the Fuji, I think it's the GA645, can shoot 6x17 with like some hidden feature or something. But that's like not possible, right? Like a 645 lens cannot possibly cover 6x17. Yeah, anyway. Better than the usual nightmares.